That's really when when the old K Fog pretty much died. Anyway, when they when they flipped to alternative about a year before, about a year or so ago, um, to try. I, I don't know why they did that yeah, I don't because they, no, nothing else is working. I mean, they they brought in Jason Jackson, who was Live 105 former program director, who's a great program director, and he did a great job uh, with K Fog. But there's there was just not enough audience for to support two alternative stations yeah. and, and Alt 1053, the old Live 105, had a long history in the market. So right, right. there was just no way that was going to work. So when it's... they pulled the plug on KFOG earlier this year, there was, you know, there was a lot of, of sadness and reminiscing by the, uh, the, the Foghead audience. But right. in my mind, it was probably, it probably, you know, it was already a, it had already died when they when they changed the format. Yeah. So, but why did um, they change? That's the big question, the mystery. Because KBCO in Denver still gets good numbers, and so does KINK in Portland. Those are two great triple A stations that just, you know, still yeah uh, prove that I don't it, know. it works. <laughs> the, you know, the demographics in the Bay Area have changed a lot. Yeah. Um, and I just don't know how much of a, you know, how how big an audience there is for, for rock music per se. So it's hard. I don't know. I I think um, it could have worked if it had been handled differently, but I wasn't the one making the decision. So while you were there, I mean, what was it like working for K Fog in its kind of its final stretch? Well, I mean, you know, the the um, the staff on the front lines, you know, the, the other DJs, they, they were great. All the people I worked with were great. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't say the same for management. So, you know, I, I, there's no, there's much, I don't know if there's much point in getting into mudslinging at this right, point. Right, right, no problem. But the fault, <laughs> the fault you know, I lied with... Uh, the people at the top were making the decisions. Um, I didn't think they made good decisions about how to, how to program the station. Um, so, um, that's the, industry, at the lower though. level, all the people can do is kind of, you know, do what they're told to do. Right. Um, I, you know, and they brought, they had a couple of good program directors in those six or seven, however many they had, they, they had, they had some good hires and, some that were less good, but um, too much interference from the corporate level. Yeah. Um, and it was just, you know, just a cog in, in the wheel of their, of that market, you know, of their cluster of stations in San Francisco. And, and they made a lot more money with KNBR, the sports station and, and the bone, uh, the, uh, Classic. The AOR station, yeah. and K Fog was more kind of a little eclectic niche type audience at that point. And if it had been handled differently, I think it it, it could have survived. But um, they, like I say, it was it was a long, slow death. Well, isn't that why it's cool to work at an indie station these days? <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, it is, you know, it's, this is where I'm working now. It's a completely, it's almost 180 degrees different. I mean, it's a, what you'd call a mom and pop in that it's an individual owner, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a complete antithesis of a, of a corporate mentality. Um, and you know, there are pros and cons. Uh, you have certainly more limited resources yeah. at a place like the coast. Um, but um, you don't have the corporate mindset, which has, you know, been the ruination of a lot of radio. So right. everything, everything in life is trade-off, Alex. That's right. I've learned it already. That's right. Except that when you call a station the coast, you actually get an image in your mind of the coast. And you couldn't do that in Denver or Midwest, probably. Um, no, you wouldn't <laughs> call a station in the Midwest the coast because there is no coast 
So that there's a lake. So they can't really corporatize that, you know, or, or standardize it or cookie cutterize it and, and put it all over the country. No. <laughs> but it, it does have a, a surreal image and name and logo and the way you've described it makes it sound like it's it's you know kind of a really cool um community as well as um imaginative station is what it sounds like yeah it's 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 unique there's no doubt about it you know there's pros and cons of it in any situation but this this one is it's it's pretty unique um and it has very it has a very dedicated um, audience. Right. I will say that for sure. And it's been around. And, and you can't really say that about too many big corporate stations anymore. I guess that's my point is that um, across America, all the major cities uh, pretty much have the same story, you know, the same kind of stations everywhere. But then you get outside of the major markets and you get these unique stations like yours, the coast. And it, it um, to me, it's refreshing those stations still exist. Well, I, it, there's something to be said for being sort of outside the sphere of um, the corporate influence. Um, and there was a time when you know, this was kind of the way it was in most places. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's sort of a rarity. And there aren't a lot of stations, you know. We're we're going on thirty years, uh, and that's that's certainly a heritage station. K Fog lasted eighty two thirty seven, mm -hmm. more or less. Uh, so that that was a pretty good run, uh, and we're coming up in our thirtieth. So yeah, there's not a lot of stations that have maintained a pretty steady identity for that long a time. It's true. It's interesting, and it all comes down to ratings in the big markets. Um, but do, do, do you yeah, have to? We have, you know, we have one book a year here. Okay, okay. I'm not making that up. <laughs> um, we yeah. have we have one book a year, um, so um, it, it, it it that only goes so far, right? Um, and we, you know, we we do have our our online listeners and you know in recent years it's become a lot easier to um, actually quantify how many people are listening online that's true um which should which should theoretically help with your national advertisers because you can right. go to them and say hey look you know we've got this many people listening online outside of our market but i think even the national ad buyers are still i think there's some frustration uh, uh, from stations that even though they can now quantify how many people are listening online, there's still some resistance from national ad buyers to, uh, you know, to, to factor that in when they decide where to place their, their ads, as I understand it, but I don't, I don't handle that directly. So, right. So I if, if, I mean, um, I know you can listen online to your station, but do you, do you yes. cater does the, does the advertising mainly still just cater to Mendocino, or does it go for the yeah? No, very much. I mean, we we do we do have we do have nationals, um, but uh, the rest of the advertising is local, and it's pretty. Uh, we have a lot of um, a lot of local advertisers who actually, you know, the client comes in, and they actually will voice the spot. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll bring them into the production room, and we'll have them voice the spot. Uh, if they're not comfortable doing it, then we will we will have one of our jocks uh, voice it for them. But yeah, all, all of our advertising is Mendocino County, except for uh, the nationals we get. Okay. How about local music? Do you ever get local bands coming after you? We have well, we've had we have a local music show called Local Licks that Tom. Uh, who's the owner and program director? He also does the the night time, night does nights. Uh, that's been on, I don't know, for well, probably almost as long as he's been here. And there are, there are a lot of musicians living up in Mendocino County. A lot of a lot of Bay Area musicians moved up here, starting in the '60s. Um, 
what we don't have, uh, we don't really have much in, in, in way of uh, live music venues up here. And because we're kind of isolated and out of the way, we don't get, we don't get touring artists coming through here. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, local, there's a lot of music here for local musicians, but we don't get touring acts coming through here. I think I think there's about thirty thousand people who live in the entire county. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, and most yeah, of them are wow. uh, farmers, right? <laughs> uh, there's some. There's definitely some farming here. There's a lot of. Uh, it's a lot of wine country. There's a lot of grape farming. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pri the primary um, agriculture. Um, there's 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 a fair amount of green farming up here too, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so, but of course that's legal now. Yeah. So the uh, oh speaking, the, uh, speaking of that, we have a show coming up after this that's all about cannabis. How about that? <laughs> so yeah. So it's not a word we try to hide. <laughs> no, no. When um no when when it was uh, still uh, illegal. Uh, there was all kinds of of uh, money up here from the black market. Oh yeah, um, especially and when Humboldt. It became legal. <laughs> when it's, you know, well, Humboldt, which is the next county north of us, mm -hmm. um, but here in Mendocino as well, when uh, cannabis was legalized, uh, it kind of changed the dynamic of the economy. Mm -hmm. um, and this it used to be a big logging town. It used to be a huge. Uh, logging mm -hmm. facility, a uh, lumber mill mm -hmm. um, that closed down, uh, I think, in the new late 90s, early 2000s. Don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. And they, they tore down the lumber mill, and now we have a beautiful um, co coastal trail, which is literally a trail that you can hike right along the coast. And uh, it's, it's, it's a gorgeous area for outdoor activities, and so we're, they, they're kind of transitioning to... Uh, the tourism okay. as the main great outdoor. main economy up here. Yeah. Social, Social. music. music.